More than a dozen mudslides have now struck Boundary County in North Idaho. Just after noon today, a Crim2 news camera was rolling as one of those slides nearly took a man's life. Scott Charleston witnessed the slide and joined us now live via satellite from Bonners Ferry. Scott, how are people there handling the danger? Well, Robin, as you ma might imagine, folks up here are quite shaky, and I would include myself in that group. After all, no one is certain whether it's actually safe to drive, much less walk in the vicinity of some of these crumbling hillsides that are all around us now. At first, there seemed to be a rush to try and reopen all the roads, get the uh, railroad tracks reopened for business as well. But now, after the accident, which you're about to see, officials here have been slowing down the cleanup process. A sudden torrent of mud, snow, rocks, and trees come racing down one of the many steep and saturated slopes near Bonner's Ferry. For one man, there was no escaping. An excavator inside his tractor, squarely in harm's way. They blew him out the side window and shot him out away from the machine, and that's what he did. He lit, and they say he broke his leg in half here and blew his knee out. Lucky. Just tell him really, really easy, slow, Brett, and easy. A second look shows just how lucky Corey Kramer was. The slide came from several hundred feet above the railroad tracks where Kramer was clearing debris from an earlier slide. He was thrown perhaps 50 feet. Still, he was far better off than his tractor, which was literally cut in two by the slide's awesome power. A power that is not lost on the workers assigned to restore order in the shadow of a mudslide. It's like digging in a sand pile when you was a kid with playing little trucks or whatever. You take two out and eventually it's going to come down. The fear of more slides has Boundary County officials slowing down the pace in their effort to reopen roadways and railroad tracks. Everybody back out of the area. Let's back up a little bit. So we're taping off this section of the road completely, not allowing anybody to be in this entire section of the road until we can get some geologists and engineers in here to assess the situation and tell us what we should be doing. It's been a record year for snowfall in Bonners Ferry. Since November, 140 inches have fallen. Until recently, that snow is helping to hold some of these hillsides in place. Now that it's all melting, the hillsides are beginning to crumble. Even before the mud had settled on this slide came word of another slide in another part of the county. With the hillsides shaking, Bonners Ferry finds itself literally running for the flats. And Boundary County officials have asked uh, the governor of the state of Idaho, Phil Batt, for a disaster declaration for the entire county because of the many slides. Highway 2 is now closed. That was the detour route last night uh, because Highway 95 was closed last night. Highway 95, which is right behind me, the slide you see behind me, that was uh, what caused the closure last night. It is open, but Highway 2 is not. And uh, around the county, it's a mess. Reporting live. In Bonners Ferry, Scott Charleston, Crem2 News. That's very frightening. Thanks a lot, Scott. And of course, we'll keep you updated on Corey Kramer's condition. North of Spokane, and I own a mudslide destroys a home. Crem2's depot. Because Clark. of the continued slides, but on a positive note, the officials today are still dealing with several landslides, such as the one that buried a car and blocked Highway 95 south of Bonners Ferry yesterday. Heavier than normal moisture and warm weather are combining to make Boundary County hillsides disappear. Highway 95 is open to traffic now, although it's down to one lane and several other roads in the area have been closed because of landslides. A home is ripped in two by a mudslide. Half of the house is just a few yards away from... Fire. I'm Mary Mishima. And I'm Mark Wright. Tonight, total team coverage that you can count on, on mud, tons of it, in mudslides that have closed highways, pushed homes off their foundations, and buried train tracks in the northwest. Our coverage begins at Highway 95, just south of Bonners Ferry, Idaho. Total News 4's Brett Bowers have, has been there all day documenting the battle against Mother Nature. Brett? Mark, we're standing on what was the detour road last night, but just off to my left, you can see up the hill there, excavating crews and loaders are trying to deal with some of the debris just from a minor slide, one of many that have occurred here in Boundary County throughout the day. Let's look at the real problem, though. This slide behind me is the one last night that closed down the US 95 uh, overnight and for much of the day, but uh, fortunately, all lanes of US 95 are open right now. The county continues to deal with slides throughout the region. There have been power outages. A severe storm blew through here uh, earlier today, but nothing in comparison to the past 24 hours, including last night's slide. Oh, here it comes. 
Even though we get the disasters, our community's pretty uh, tough for pulling through them in times like this. They're sliding, and they're sliding all day today still. More than a dozen North Idaho emergency agencies are assisting Boundary County's state of emergency. The largest uh, concern to people was the truck traffic that had to be just literally stopped from going north or south, and we just didn't have a choice on that. 61 sitting right at the top of the easy stage for slick roads. By midday, Boundary County's North Hill is a standstill as crews remove the mud and debris from a slide that closed the same part of US-95 Wednesday night. It's not so bad, I wouldn't change it for any place else in the world. North Idaho's main rail line is also a concern. The vibrations from the train may even have started to slide. Disaster officials are amazed but relieved this Burlington Northern train escaped derailment. If it had been a passenger train, it probably could have been a lot more serious. Still, the biggest slide anyone here can remember is fresh on their mind. I thought it was an earthquake at first, then I heard it rumble and hit metal. Lucy Jensen lives directly below the slide, but disaster officials fear the worst may not be over. Still, Lucy has faith. God will take care of us. Now this afternoon, Boundary County disaster officials are just across uh, the Kootenai Valley here checking on another slide in comparison to the magnitude of this one behind me. Now again, transportation officials in Idaho do have all lanes of US-95 open right now, but there were a number of problems on the North Hill earlier today. In the meantime, there's still problems with the rail line. 21-year-old Corey Kramer of Bonners Ferry had to be airlifted from here earlier today after a mudslide uh, buried his excavator, and he has uh, suffered at least a broken ankle. Live in Bonners Ferry, more to come here on Total News 4. Brett schools were and, closed. And it just came crashing down. Tons of debris hit the excavator and blew it off the tracks and down the hill as if that piece of equipment weren't even there. The man inside, Corey Kramer of Bonners Ferry, was thrown clear and landed some 40 feet away from his buried piece of equipment. Paramedics arrived quickly and decided not to wait for an ambulance. A nearby pickup was used to transport Kramer. Boundary County emergency officials say too much moisture is causing the ground to become unstable. Combine that with steep hillsides and tons of snow and you get these multiple landslides in the steep North Idaho terrain. Now, we spoke with Kramer's father just a few minutes ago. The young man who's 21 years old apparently only suffered uh, maybe a broken ankle, so he wasn't too seriously injured. He has, however, been airlifted into Spokane to a local hospital there where he is recovering right now. As for the rest of the situation here, emergency crews say that the landslides will continue for quite some time. It's quite a serious situation. Schools have also been called off, at least for today, perhaps for tomorrow. Also, power is out in many places around Boundary County because of the problem, and they say, Bev, it's going to continue for the foreseeable future. All right, Toby, thank you, and we will keep you up to date on the school situation in the county coming up tonight on Q6 News. The water that, of course, that 